Uh, good evening. We got everyone kind of gathered over here and a few over here, but welcome. And uh, we we're here tonight to uh, talk about the superintendent search process. We want to welcome all of you. Um, and uh, in, in, in terms of the district and where the, hi Diana, uh, where the district is uh, currently, is current fiscal state, I need to say that we're in great shape right now. Uh, things are looking well for us budgetarily. And a number of other things are going well for the district at this time. Um, and you know, our priority as a district is to make sure that we focus on the success of all of our students. And having a superintendent that can help achieve that is very important. And having the right personnel in place is extremely important as well. And we, we have a number of people here that are part of the staff. And all these folks are part of the, the, the effort of the Long Beach Unified School District. I'm just going to have the staff kind of raise their hand so you know who they are. All of our staff, OK. Thank you all. Um, so we want to hear from you regarding this process, what your thoughts are, uh, what your concerns are relative to a superintendent, and also to solicit information from you about the process that we can use in going forward in terms of this, this search. Uh, you will hear a little bit more information about the process itself as we move through the, this, this, this program this evening. Uh, again, I want to just say welcome to, for, to all of you for coming out. And let me introduce our Deputy Superintendent of Education Services, Ruth Ashley, who will give you a bit more information about what we're about to do tonight. Ruth? Get my stuff out of the way. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see you. And I just have a couple of things to share before we get on with the agenda. But I want to acknowledge um, Cabrillo for hosting us tonight. So thank you very much. I'd also like to offer my gratitude um, for the West Side in general. There's definitely a sense of pride. and. Being born and raised on the west side and driving down Santa Fe, I'm really reminded about the strength of this community. So thank you very much to everyone who's here and to all of those who are watching from home or your phones, your iPads, whatever device you have. Thank you for the support of our schools. I also um, want to pay tribute to the legacy um, from all of us who have been a part of this district and as Dr. Williams has said, we are here to give our feedback to be heard in regards to the qualities that we want to see at our next superintendent. But I have to say that um, Chris Steinhauser has been here for 38 years, 18 years as a superintendent, but he does leave a legacy. Um, don't look at him because he doesn't like to be acknowledged. I told him I wouldn't call him out. But it is the strength of the community. So I just wanted to um, pay tribute to Chris and thank you for the legacy that you're leaving. And we're going to be OK. And we really appreciate the feedback that you're about to give. So let's go on. And if you see your agenda, you'll also see the outcomes that are listed here. So by the end of this evening, for the time that we have together, the outcomes we have listed are, first of all, to create an appreciative environment for the gathering of the community. Secondly, to provide an overview of the superintendent selection process. To gather feedback from the community regarding the desired characteristics of a superintendent. And to gather feedback on the district strengths, areas of improvement, and issues to address or anticipate in the future. So a little bit about the process and timeline. I can describe that in four phases. And we are currently in phase two. Phase one was just the identification of the process, the approval of the timeline by the board, the selection criteria, and obviously approving the recruitment materials. 
We are now in phase two, which is public outreach and recruitment that goes between February 6th and March 9th. And this is where we have the very first community forum tonight. We have six others planned. The last one will be on Saturday, the um, 14th of March, right here back at Cabrillo. So there's a list of those community forums um, back at the front tables. You can grab that. But again, thank you for being here. They're all the same. This is also where we advertise through our website and other professional organizations. We reach out to individual school districts and county offices of education as well. Phase three is the application and screening and interview process. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the advisory committee that will be conducting our initial interviews and giving their recommendations to the Board of Education. And then finally, phase five, where we have the appointment of our new superintendent on May 6. All right, so this is a list of our community forums. I'm going to apologize to you ahead of time for blowing up your phones, blowing up your emails. I know School Messenger went out, and so um, thank you for receiving those. Again, for our public outreach efforts, you can see all of these community forums via YouTube. You can just subscribe as well. We have an online thought exchange, which is going on from February 24th through March 6th. Many of you may have already received a thought exchange email, and that's where you would log on. And just simply share your thoughts online. You can read the thoughts of other folks. And this has already been deployed for our LCAP efforts. And you can like the thoughts of others that have joined in and it's a great way to express yourselves online. There are continual updates, and for more information, you can always go on to our website and um, just go into the A through Z index and select superintendent selection. I'm going to take some time to talk about the advisory committee, and this is an important group because they are representing various stakeholder groups throughout the community and it bears to mention these individually. So there are about 23, um, 24 members, and they're being represented by ALBUM, the Association of Long Beach Education Managers, the Assistance League of Long Beach. We have two members from the Board of Education who will be joining the advisory committee. That is Megan Kerr and Dr. Williams. We have California Conference for Equity and Justice. We also have um, a representative from Cal State Long Beach, for California's for Justice, so we will be ha having a student voice on the committee as well. Classified School Employees Association will have two representatives from CSEA. The Coalition of Involved African American Parents will have a rep along with District Community Advisory Committee, DCAC, and DLAC, District English Learner Advisory Committee. Two members are of, of our executive staff will be there. Doc, uh, we have David Said and Yumi Takahashi, who will be joining us. And uh, we have our representative from the Kamai Parents Association, Long Beach Council PTA, NAACP will be represented, the Pacific Islander Education Voyage, our Special Education Community Advisory Committee will have a rep. We have two members from Taub joining us and a member from the center, LBGTQ Center of Long Beach. All right, so let's take a look at our agenda again and attach, you should have a copy of the Superintendent Governance Standards. And there are 11 governance standards um, that are to be adopted through school districts throughout the state. And this will kind of help us read through it and give us some things to think about. And it's going to help us tee us up for this next conversation. So what I would like for you to do is re read through this list. And then I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to probably move from your seat, introduce yourself to somebody that you're sitting next to, and just exchange thoughts in regards to what qualities would you like to see in our next superintendent. And you may want to highlight some of the words or phrases on this list 
to generate those thoughts. So go ahead and take a couple of minutes, read through, and then I'm going to invite you to move from your seat and to introduce yourself to someone you're sitting next to. You also were given note cards, so feel free to use those note cards to jot down anything that you would like to leave with staff.
So now that you've read through your list, go ahead and have that conversation with the folks that you're sitting next to. And just talk about the qualities that you would like to see in our next superintendent. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and show this next slide. In a moment, I'm going to be inviting you to come up and speak to the community, to speak to everyone here, to share those qualities that you are desiring in our next superintendent. But also, we will be listening for three particular things. You can also tell your story in terms of the strengths that you know about Long Beach Unified, and perhaps what are some of the district's areas for improvement that we should consider. And then lastly, we'll also be listening for the issues to address or anticipate for the future. So go ahead and keep those things in mind as you're jotting down your notes and having that conversation. Thank you. Go ahead and take two more minutes. Okay, thank you for engaging in that conversation. Now comes the time where I will invite whoever would like to come up to the podium to address the group. This is a time for public comment. Again, we're going to be sharing about the strengths, areas for improvement, not just the qualities we wanna see in, 
for our superintendent, but go ahead and tell your story and also think about um, some of the issues or concerns that we need to anticipate for the future. So we will start from the back. So the back two or three rows, if you would like to come up. And if you need an interpreter, we have um, Gloria, who's here, who will come down to the podium as well. Okay, we have our first brave soul. Okay, first about the points number one, uh, we consider we were talking about the, we are very important district with a, a lot of population and that's why we, we need to give them very priority uh, importance because we need to keep the education for the children up. We need to, to keep one education better uh, and, and they grade and their quality. And the number, number two, what, what are the district areas for improving? That's, you know, the, the keep one uh, education. Number one, education. Education, education, education. And number three, the participation, the participa give more uh, participation to the parents, to the community, because many times the community or the parents, they don't know, or, or uh, you know, the, sometimes the parents uh, are very ignorant, the community is very ignorant, they don't know what is happening in the schools, uh, and always they say, they say connection, schools, Parents in community, always I see that. Communities, parents in community, and that is not true. That is not true. It's no any connection in community, parents in, uh, in uh, education and schools. Any, any communication, uh, always they try to hide something. Uh, the schools try to keep away, like uh, with a lot of hypocrisy with parents. In the community, maybe because they want to keep away, it's very nice to keep away about the, some uh, education problems. And the parents, don't they, they acting like, oh, take care of my children. Mm, uh, I don't know about, uh, about what, is, what is going on in their education, and also the, uh, uh, who, who give attention to the students. Nobody. And the parents say that, you know, the, uh, the school, the school say the parents, the parents say the system, the community, and everybody try to uh, try to keep uh, out. Um, or oh, is their fault? Is they no? Is their fault? And every and nobody, nobody get responsibility. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, come on up. And if you would introduce yourself, tell us your name. Hi, my name is Robin Skansich. Um, I didn't actually come here tonight to speak, so <laughs> uh, this will be <clears throat> on the fly. Um, I do think that the district is doing a good job communicating to parents in terms of things that are going on at the schools. They have done a much better job of um, sending out alerts and emails. I know I get a ton of text messages and 
emails and I can choose to look at the ones that I want to. I think there maybe needs to be a little bit more, um, some of the information may need to be in other languages for some of the population. Um, I know that is a, a concern, um, but I think it's the information is there if parents are wishing to seek it. Maybe um, it would be more helpful if the uh, administration at each school kind of tells the parents at the beginning of the school year, this is how we're going to communicate these things and have kind of a, a blueprint of, of what they're going to be trying to convey to parents throughout the year. So parents know if, if this is something they're interested in, then they know where to look. If it's on the website, if it's uh, via email, if they're going to be sending out weekly alerts. Um, I know that the schools that my kids have gone to have done that. Um, I also wanted to say that I really feel that Long Beach has done a good job of creating different pathways for students that have different interests and al also academic, um, different academic levels. Um, but I, I was concerned because I recently heard from a teacher that worked in the district that they are going to be changing some of the academic programs. Um, and I know that uh, I have a, a student, for instance, um, that is in one of the top academic programs in the district. And I heard that they're going to be trying to change it so that it is more inclusive. And I am a firm believer in diversity and inclusivity. Um, but I also feel like kids that have the ability to be challenged more need that challenge. And they need that challenge in order to um, compete with kids in other districts and across the nation and in the world. Um, so trying to make the, um, the programs maybe easier so that it's, it's easier to enter the program um, and I, I just feel like that would be a disservice to, to the kids that are able to challenge themselves more. Um, but I, I do believe in education for all and diversity is a wonderful thing. You need all the voices. And I do think that um, getting the information out to, to parents and understanding how to help their children uh, throughout the process, um, throughout their schooling is very important. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do we have other speakers? Okay, while you're building up your courage, I'd like to thank Dr. Christy Kale, Dr. Lucy Salazar, and Marie Hatwan for being our scribes. I'll give you another moment. Anybody else? I think we're, we're good. We have Ms. Hatwan here, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Good evening, I'm Marie Hatwan. Um, I'm a parent of three students who have graduated the system of Long Beach Unified and are very successful and I'm very proud of them. I am also um, the principal of Marshall Academy of the Arts Middle School. I too wasn't planning on speaking tonight, but I feel very passionate about our school system and our children and our students. And I'm all choked up already. And uh, of course, I'm not going to look that direction, but I thank Mr. Steinhauser for all that he's done. But the, what I really find important is the hope for our, the successor has to continue the core values of our Long Beach Unified School District, our ways. And most importantly, I feel as a principal, what I do every day which is supported by the district personnel and execs, is to put students first. Well, I can't believe I'm so choked up. But we, it's very important in this selection process that we keep someone or find someone who is the Long Beach way, somebody who knows um, the important value of that. And it seems like it's so simply, simply, simple, simply said but it's really not that easy because so much can get lost in the day. 
There's so much uh, other regulations, uh, maintenance, uh, so much other things that can get in the way that if we forget to put students first that it's not going to be effective. So I just hope within this whole process that we remember the core values of our district, how st it's every student every day. And um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Now we have the Juan Harris. Good evening. I'm excited to be here. I didn't know what to expect, but I am glad that I'm here um, to hear the process. I have been in Long Beach since 1971. I'm not going to tell you a whole long story. But I started at Hughes Middle School, and then I went to Poly, and then Cal State Long Beach. And so I, too, consider myself a Long Beach person, although Alabama is home. So just so you know that. But what I wanted to say was, <clears throat> excuse me, I started college and I went into um, civil engineering was my major. And I got a job with Long Beach Unified as a teacher's aide. Excuse me, I'm <clears throat> getting dry throat here. I started a job as a teacher's aide at Signal Hill Elementary School. And I was working in a first grade classroom and I changed my major from civil engineering to go into education because the teacher that I was working with was teaching children how to read. And I was fascinated with the process of seeing first graders learn the letters, learn how to blend, put those letters together, make words, read books. So I changed my major and have been in education ever since then. And working in Long Beach Unified, I was also at the same school that Mr. Steinhauser and I were teacher aides together. And he and the group, the other teacher aide came to my wedding. So we, we have history. And it's really gonna be a sad thing to see him go because he has a heart for children. He has a heart for this district and he wants to see all children succeed and so that's what we want to push with our new um, superintendent that's coming in that they have a heart for children that they want to see all students reach their greatest potential that includes our administrators that are above or underneath mr steinhauser pushing for all students to be educated and the young lady that spoke about the programs that we have, the whole thing is called differentiation, giving students what they need to be successful. So we need to make sure that we're differentiating our curriculum, differentiating our instruction, differentiating what we need to make sure that students are success. Because honestly, if we didn't have students, we wouldn't have a job. We wouldn't be in this room right now if there were no students. So students, again, I heard someone say, are our priority. We need to put them first. Then we need to get our teachers. We need to instruct them with quality and make sure that they are differentiating for the needs of the students. And then we can take it to the next level. Those that are over the teachers, the administrators, that they too are differentiating. Every teacher, every person is not the same. We all have needs. We all need to be able to support what we're looking for. And those are our students that can achieve, that reach their highest potential. So I'm going to sit down. Thank you for the opportunity. And I appreciate this process so that we can have a superintendent that can continue the great work that has already been started in Long Beach and then take us to the next level. Thank you. Thank you for that, Thawan. Is there anyone else who would like to address the group? Come on up.
Um, was not planning on saying anything today. I just wanted to see what the process was all about. I was very excited about still being a part of the district and seeing the changing of the guard, so to speak. I had an opportunity as a very young uh, teacher, young instructor to see uh, Mr. Steinhauser take over for uh, Mr. Cohen. And um, there was some apprehension at that time, you know, whoa, what's gonna happen, you know? We had this great, um, you know, uh, superintendent and, uh, and there was a lot of questions, but um, steady as she, as she goes. I mean, uh, equity and stability. I, I, I think that's uh, what I would like to see. Thank you so much. <laughs> We want to thank those brave souls who ventured up here to express their, their interests and concerns about what this process should be going forward. And uh, while I have an opportunity, I want to introduce our two board members, Megan Kerr, who's here, and Diana Craighead. Um, you know, um, having you come out and provide this, this input is important. It's important for the, for the community to be part of this process as we move forward to bring in a new superintendent. And the remarks were right on target from all of you tonight. And we really, truly appreciate it. And what we will do is, is bring all of this together as we put together the uh, uh, application process and also the, the questions that we will be using to interview potential candidates for, for the superintendent's position. Uh, we, we heard that People were uh, more or less happy with the direction of this district, the things that this district has undertaken over the years, and very appreciative of the work of our superintendent. And um, it's a daunting job to be superintendent of a major urban school district. So again, we wanna thank all of you for coming out tonight and sharing your thoughts about what this process should look like going forward. You still have an in an opportunity to provide input as we move along with this process. And uh, again, it is a very, very important process for a school district that's considered one of the top performing school districts in the nation. And we want to continue to be among the top performing school districts in the nation. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. And thank you to all of our staff and volunteers as well.